Today's deck was sponsored by Patreon. If you want to help out the channel, consider checking out the link below. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Gravekeepers for a couple reasons. The first one being that Necro Valley is eroded. I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, it now says all Gravekeepers monsters gain 500 attack or defense. That's what it always was. Um, cards in Graveyard cannot be banished, still like it always was. But the, the change here is that it says negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place and negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. Now, I actually don't know any that affect that very last point of changing types and attributes in the graveyard. But the important thing here is that uh, in the past, you could use cards that could move themselves out of the graveyard when Necro Valley was on the field. But now, if it moves itself out of the graveyard, you can't use it. Um, this is pretty important. I'm trying to think of a couple meta-relevant things here. Um, but in the past, people have used, like, uh, Machina Fortress with Necro Valley, and you can bring that back. Um, you can do stuff like Glow Up Bulb and things like that, where when they're only moving their self, they used to be able to get around Necro Valley. But uh, since the recent printing of Necro Valley, that actually doesn't work anymore. Um, this makes this card a lot more effective, I would say. And uh, Necro Valley in general is pretty well positioned. It's obviously really good against dinosaurs. It uh, stops a lot of the zoo stuff. As long as you can counter the Dryden that they summon, you're usually set because it stops Chacanine and Tiger Mortar. Um, but just in general, I think Necro Valley is good. And this errata is one of the biggest reasons that uh, I picked this deck for this particular Patreon video because there was a couple that I had to choose from. But uh, I think Gravekeepers are cool. And I think a lot of people are playing it wrong. So in the past, or at least recently, I've seen a lot of people playing Gravekeepers with Card of Demise. And uh, I can kind of get that. The Gravekeepers kind of struggle to plus off of any card effects. Um, their biggest plussing play is like tributing Recruiter for Descendant to pop a card and then search a card. Um, that's not super great in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! So uh, people play Card of Demise to sort of help you out. The problem is, is that when you play Card of Demise, you have to make a lot of sacrifices as far as your other deck building choices go, because you have to limit yourself on special summon cards, and then when you don't draw a Card of Demise, your deck's just a really bad version of regular Gravekeepers um, with the special summoning effects, because you can build your deck around Card of Demise, but then the games where you don't draw it, you're just totally screwed. And that's one of the reasons that you haven't seen me play Card of Demise in any decks, because... I don't like the idea of building your entire deck around a card that's an unsearchable three of. Uh, yes, you're going to open it sometimes, even especially when you have other draw power to supplement it. But in general, I just want to stay away from that card. Um, so what I wanted to do here was create a deck that didn't rely on card and demise, could make use of Necro Valley, and could make use of the Gravekeepers. And to me, the theme that combined with them the most with all those criteria was actually Wind Witches. So I haven't played Wind Witches yet, but if you don't know, Wind Witch Ice Spell is a one card crystal wing synchro dragon that's immune or immune to destruction from card effects um that's pretty good so all you have to do is special summon uh, ice spell and then you uh special the glass spell from the deck which adds snowbell to your hand and then you special summon them go through into a level seven synchro and then climb up to crystal wing synchro dragon um that's a pretty common play for decks like invoked wind witches and uh, wind witches in the ocg are actually really powerful but uh, i like this play a lot because you're making the Crystal Wing next to your Necro Valley, and especially if you open like a, another Gravekeeper's card like Spy or Recruiter, that gives you sort of a defensive option as well. Um, but the Crystal Wing protects the Necro Valley from Dryden, and that's really crucial. Um, if you summon Crystal Wing next to Necro Valley, your opponent if they're playing Zoo, is going to be fairly limited on their options there. Um, they, they pretty much have to go straight for the Dryden off of their Zoo Normal Summon or Zoo Exceed Summon, and uh, then you can just Crystal Wing it right away, and it's pretty good. Um, so I'll show you the list here. Um, I, I had to make space for a lot of things, but I want to talk about my choices. So you're playing three Gravekeepers Commandant because that's like the one you want to see in every opening hand. Two Gravekeepers Spy, it's still a good card. It's just probably too slow to play at three. Two Gravekeepers Recruiter, you don't really want to draw this card, you just want to special summon it. One Gravekeepers Descendant, sort of search um, when you need it. And then one Gravekeepers uh, Heretic. I actually think Heretic is like the best Gravekeepers monster, at least in this deck. Um, it's just really powerful because it's immune to everything, and uh, it's only a one of because you never really want multiples on the field. You just want that one, and it's really hard for your opponent to deal with. I also have one copy of Maxi. Uh, a lot of people are cutting Ghost Ogre and Ash Blossom from their decks, so I'm not really 
um, too concerned with playing that in my deck here. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't want too many hand traps because once again, Gravekeepers can't really plus ever. Um, even with this version, they, they sort of struggle without Gravekeepers Steely, um, or however you pronounce that card, Steel or Steely. Uh, so Maxi is really good for thwarting your opponent, but if you just like minus one to Ash Blossom something, then you're sort of in a worse position than you started because you're down a card. Um, for the Wind Witches, we're playing three Ice Bell, two Glass Bell, one Snow Bell. I think this is the optimal lineup for this. Uh, I've considered just dropping it to one Glass Bell, but in the times that I've tested that, it's been really, really bad. Um, and one of the cool things about if you play the two Glass Bells is that if you open one of them, you can summon it to search Ice Bell, and then on your next turn, you can still do the full combo. Um, I think that's just too invaluable to not play. Uh, for the draw spells, we have two Allure of Darkness, two Pot of Desires. Um, I think that's pretty standard. I didn't want to play three Allure. There's not that many darks in the deck. I don't want to play three Desires because I only really want to resolve one. Um, and, I, and I think that it's not as good as Card of Demise in terms of keeping up your card advantage, but it doesn't restrict you from playing the Wind Witches, which I think are really important for putting damage on the board. So, uh, yeah, I think that the 2-2 two -two lineup was fine. Um, Regeki and two Dark Hole, this deck really doesn't want to go second at all, so I, I have to put in cards that are good going second. Um, two Gravekeeper Steely, that's like the, the, the one card that pluses in this deck. Um, generally speaking, you're just sort of grinding your opponent through one-for-ones with restricting them with Necro Valley. Well, then you activate Gravekeeper Steely and just blow them out. Um, that's I think it's pretty good. And then my tech here is hitting Temples of Necro Valley, um... This card isn't that great when you're not playing the Wind Witches because a lot of times you just end your turn with like a Necro Valley and then a Grave Keeper's Monster and then this. And it's, yes, it's it's a Vanny's Emptiness, but if they just have like anything to out your field, you just lose immediately. But I think when you can play it next to Crystal Wing, it's actually just ridiculous. Um, obviously, you summon the Grave Keeper's Monster first, uh, but... Or, sorry, you summon the Crystal Wing first. Um, I guess you can summon the Great Heroes Monsters whenever you feel like. Uh, but I think that's a pretty good setup. Um, and then some other stuff, we just have two Cosmic Cyclone, one Book of Moon. Pretty standard there. Three Necro Valley, obviously. Um, no reason not to play three. That's like the, the main goal of the deck is just abuse Necro Valley and uh, chip in damage with the, the high attack Gravekeeper Monsters. The traps is just the seven best traps in the game right now. I, I, I don't think you need to play Imperial Order. We don't really have a good way to turn it off. I only really like Imperial Order in decks that can play like Dryden to pop it. Um, so we're not playing that. So it's just three D Barrier, three Solemn Strike, one Solemn Warning. Uh, while I think D-Barrier will lose some utility as Link Summoning becomes more prevalent, for now, Link Summoning isn't really important to stop, so I think D-Barrier is fine. Um, no, it's not going to get an errata to stop Link Summoning, just in case you were wondering. The extra deck is uh, pretty straightforward, so we just have the three Synchro Monsters that you would play, so one Crystal Wing, and then a Clear Wing, and a uh, the Winter Bell card. Um, these are pretty, I don't know, they're pretty standard. I don't think you need any more synchros. We don't really have... I mean, we only have the, the two different tuners here. Um, so we're just going to play those three. This lets you... the With the... Um, what is it? W by playing a second level 7 monster, you can actually uh, make, like... Uh, okay, so like if let's say you open the Crystal Wing combo, that's all fine and Danny, and then you end with like a Recruiter, and they don't get over it. So next turn, you can normal summon a Glass Bell, and then Synchro with the Recruiter to make a uh, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, and that's not like a amazing play, but it's pretty good, and it gets you a Recruiter Search. So I like that play. Um, yeah, I don't know, it just seems pretty good. Also, when you uh, get Max Seed, you want to summon, you don't really want to go for the Crystal Wing, so the Clear Wing is just like the next best option. Uh, anyway, for the rank fours, there's like a whole bunch of them here. I don't think any of them are necessarily super important for calling out specifically, except maybe perform H Trapeze Magician. Uh, we play just all spellcasters except for Maxi, and you're never going to be normal summoning Maxi. So Trapeze Magician really gets in there as far as uh, damage goes. Um, I also am a big fan of number 66, Master Key Beetle. Master Key Beetle is just incredible in any deck where you have cards that you want to protect. Um, you usually can't make it on the first turn, if we're being honest here. Um, Gravekeeper Spy is like the only way to really set up the Master Key Beetle play. But man, when you're going to get like Master Key Beetle next to Necro Valley, it's just really hard for your opponent to deal with. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's really worth mentioning. I am playing number 101, Silent Honor Arc. Um, 
I don't know. I saw this card played in the 3v3 against my friend who was playing Zodiax, and it was actually kind of annoying to out. Um, it's not annoying by itself, but when you have anything else besides it, it is. Because if it's just by itself, they can simply whiptail it. But if it's it's if it's with any other back row like D Barrier or Solemn Strike, or if it's with Crystal Wing even or Book of Moon, um, then it becomes a pretty big threat for them to deal with. And it's just it's just one of those cards that's kind of annoying for them to. Uh, run over and i don't know i like i like cards like that especially in decks like this that sort of sort of struggle with um putting enough threats on the board uh but yeah i think that's pretty much all i wanted to say um this deck's cool i, I don't know if it's going to be super great as far as a rogue strategy but as far as a casual strategy it's definitely really fun um it's also important because it never really gets interrupted by the link summoning mechanic i am not playing any link monsters in here because i don't think at least until Code of the Duels comes out, I really don't think you really need to play Link Monsters in any deck. Besides maybe Decode Talker, and I guess the Spider Guy is kind of cool. But uh, overall, I feel like Link Monsters are just not the best cards right now. Um, but this deck isn't really bothered by the Link Monster restriction, or the Link Summoning rest restriction, I should say. So uh, yeah, I think it's kind of a fun casual pick. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, this explanation, and uh, thank you for all who donated. Um, this is one of the decks that was requested. And I actually did a, a, a survey on there the other day last week um asking for some the the first decks that you guys wanted me to update when link summoning hits so we got a couple coming there so look forward to that and those will mostly be in real life deck profiles i just didn't have the uh the win witch cards i couldn't actually profile this in real life uh anyway though i'll see you guys later bye